One day, two cooks had an argument. One said, my recipe is so good that it can turn any ingredient into a great dish. The other cook disagreed and said, my ingredient is more important because that's what a person actually eats. The story to be continued, but let me take a guess on you now. You must have eaten in the past 24 hours, right? Of course you did in the past 24 hours and I don't need any AI to make such a prediction. Food is an integral part of our lives. However, when you pay closer attention, you will find out that once the sci-fi AI concept only happened in the movie, it's now everywhere around us. More interestingly, the core concept of AI matches closely to food and cooking. Here is how. Imagine in a friend's party, you have met someone charming, kind, cute, and best of all, you both love food. The conversation just unstoppable when you two talk about Iron Chef, your favorite Food Network TV show in which the world-class chefs battling for the title of legendary Iron Chefs of America. To carry on the conversation, you extend this attractive acquaintance having a cookout dinner next Sunday at your home. And the response is a resounding yes. But now, you have another problem. How to impress this new friend in your first date? I know Beef Wellington! Beef Wellington! Who doesn't want tender, flavor-exploding beef wellington just coming out of the oven baked in the perfect temperature with rich and savory sauce? The answer? A vegetarian. If you think you have a great dish to make a great impression in your first date, think twice because you may have just skipped the most important step to make a dish successful knowing your audience taste. Similarly, for an AI project, there is no point to waste the time to create some fancy AI algorithms, but you cannot use them. I love technology just like a kid loves toy. Unfortunately, most of the technology projects fail because people are just treating them as a toy. Without a real business reason, those technology project is just a toy for a geek. Therefore, the very first step is to understand the goal and comprehend why the business wants it. This is true not only for AI, but for technology projects in general. Start shopping the ingredient. Data gathering. After stalking into the Instagram post, you know your new friend's favorite is seafood gumbo. Now is the time to shop for the ingredients. This week, we have a Whole Foods special of the frozen lobster. But at the same time, right around the corner in the local seafood shop, they have a freshly daily catch with a little bit higher price. And your cousin also told you that there is a new website imports seafood freshly and daily from Mediterranean. Which one should you pick? For AI, data is your ingredient which is critical to produce your result. However, it may not be as easy to find the right data set. Sometimes you'll find multiple data sources but cannot determine which one is more reliable. In other times, you may spend weeks or even months to finally identify one data set but nothing seems appropriate after second look. Only one thing for sure, in order to make a sound data analysis, you need the right data set and being ingested by a very reliable collection process. Prepare the ingredient, I mean your data. Lucky you that finally find all the ingredients for your dish. Now, it's the time to do the prep work. Some basic steps like 
uh, cleaning, measuring, cutting, apply to both AI and cooking. And if you find your data has 100 degree in Alaska last winter, for sure something is wrong that you need to clean it up. And cleaning doesn't only necessary to apply removing bad data. It's also apply handling missing data. At the same time, the process will also detect and remove duplicated data in your data set. When you shop for your ingredient, you may buy more than you need, just in case. But in preparation, you need to decide which one you need to really use in the following process, in the following steps. And then that means you may need to discard some of the data, even though you take a long time to acquire it. Please be aware, portion to cook for a dish for a couple is very different than cooking a family meal for 10 people. So it's very important to normalize your data so that they have the right portion and the right ratio with the right balance across all the features. Hmm, which recipe should I use? Choose the right model. You think you have the secret recipe from the top gourmet chef, which will make everyone drooling just by the smell. Isn't it the equivalent secret recipe in the AI called deep learning, which surpass all the other algorithms. If that's the case, why we even bother to consider the other algorithms? There are at least two reasons. Number one, deep learning usually needs a lot more data. However, the availability of the data would not be always handy. And number two, it's the resource to, to train the deep neural network will usually be higher, but the result may just be a tiny little better, if not the same. Therefore, it's not always the complicated recipe wins. Sometimes, the old grandma recipes is what you need. Over-engineering may waste your time with like just a tiny marginal better result. In this case, less is more. Talking about recipe, some chefs invent new recipe as they become more experienced and they're willing to share with us so that we can just borrow it in our own meal. And for the same token, some very hardcore data scientists, they come together, invent some new algorithm and maybe even improve the, the existing one to make it faster and more accurate. And best of all, they open source it so that we can use it in our own project. That means, if possible, try to leverage this resource instead of reinvent the wheel yourself again. Let's fire up the stove. Training. Ingredient, check. Recipe, check. Believe it or not, if you are at this point, you have already completed 60 to 70% of the overall AI process, even before you head to the stove to fire up the data and cook it with the algorithm. Just like at the bottom of many recipes, there is a reminder saying that adjust based on your personal preference or taste. Training in AI can vary, and we can adjust it for better results. As we feed more data to the model, the model will learn the pattern of the data and provide a more reliable and trustable result. Sometimes we need to tune the hyperparameters to make the whole process more accurate and faster. However, in the very worst case, we may find out that the result is spoiled because it has a lot of bias towards certain group of people. We don't want that. In that case, we may need to throw the whole pot away and then like uh, collect the data again from the very beginning, collect a broader data from the very beginning. And training is an iterative process. Hmm, smell good. But how about the taste? 
evaluation. You think the dish is ready because the whole house smells like heaven. But wait until you taste it and make sure that everything is good. This is the evaluation for an AI process. Even though training gives you a positive and encouraging result, it doesn't mean the model is ready to be consumed. Sometimes too good of a result is an indicator of overfitting. You need someone else to taste that and make sure that they think this dish is as awesome as what you believe. There are different approaches to access the results, including simple confusion matrix or mean average error. The goal here is to make sure that the model works not only for the training data set, but it is generalized enough so that cases that has not been seen before will also be performed as good as the training data set. Ready to serve. But besides prediction, there are more to consider. Finally, the dish is ready to serve. However, prediction is not the only thing. Remember, in the very first section of this video, ultimately, business requirement is what we want to fulfill. Prediction can be and is one of the very important considerations. But that's not the only one. There is still a very fine line in between. For example, if we design an email spam filter, it would be much of a harm to let an important email go into the spam folder rather than just let a junk email go into your inbox. On the other hand, if you design a model to detect COVID-19, it's better to have a higher false positive rate rather than letting a real case slipping through the crack and let the virus go into the community. Where the fine line should put is the balance between accuracy and practicality. Check please. It would be naive to think Iron Chefs like Bobby Flay, Cat Cora, or Michael Simon cook only a few dishes in an Iron Chef episode every week. They are the owners of world-class restaurants turning ingredients and recipe to gourmet dishes for hundreds of customers. The volume is much larger in a restaurant compared to a meal of family of four. Similarly, running a full-scale of AI project in a data kitchen for an enterprise is another level of complexity. But don't worry, everything is still built on top of the foundational principles that you have just learned in this video. Remember the story about the two cooks in the beginning? Soon after the argument started, they both realized neither of them are correct, as both good ingredients with a matching recipe are critical for a delicious meal. Also, some recipes only work well for certain ingredients. But you may ask, so what? It's a science as well as an art to cook a perfect dish. As in AI, a magnificent result always comes with a unique data set combined with a harmonizing algorithm inseparably. So, with an open mind and empty stomach, with an open heart and empty stomach. Let the AI battle begin! Let the battle begin! Let the battle begin! Let the battle begin! Allah's cuisine! Allah's cuisine! If you like my video explaining technology in plain language, please subscribe here.